uh, I just want to take a minute to share about this. You know, under the Ottoman Empire, which is before the Republic of Turkey was founded in 1923, you know, the Ottoman Empire was one of the largest empires in the world for about 500 years. They ruled much of, you know, the Balkans and Eastern Europe, all into Crimea, North Africa, Middle East, all of that. So under the Ottoman Empire in the 1800s, um, you know, it's a, it's a really God did a work and American and British missionaries were allowed to come in to the Ottoman Empire, especially to, to what is today Turkey, the Anatolian region, the Asian part of Turkey. They were allowed to come in in the 1820s and 30s and establish Christian schools and establish mission bases. <laughs> Obviously, they were not allowed to evangelize legally and officially the Muslim citizens of the empire. But you, m you must understand about nearly 25, 30 percent of the population of Asia Minor were Christian minorities, Armenian, Greek, Assyrian, Chaldean. Anybody ever heard of the Chaldean? Actually, a little part of the New Testament is written in the uh, Old Testament is written in the Chaldean language. It's close to like an Aramaic type language. So they were allowed to evangelize. And there was a, and, and you need to understand when I say evangelize, preach the gospel. Because those Christian minorities, many of them were of Orthodox or Catholic backgrounds and they were not born again they were not saved you know they were traditional Christians but the the gospel was preached and within about 50 years a mighty move of God took place nearly 3,000 evangelical churches were planted the numbers say that there was about 800,000 born-again believers in Asia Minor by 1890s leading up to eight, 1890s and then from 1890 to 1915 there was massive massive persecution and I, when I say persecution I'm not talking about insults or criticism massive murder took place of Christians and it was organized not by the Turks but it was organized by insiders that had taken over the government because a lot of people don't realize it. see the Turks get the blame for what happened to the Armenians and the other people but the Turks lived together with the Armenians peacefully for hundreds of years and they were neighbors and they were the common people worked together it was not a problem but the first Masonic Lodge in the Ottoman Empire was was opened in Thessaloniki which is now in Greece but it was back then a part of the Ottoman Empire it was established the first Masonic Lodge the, of the Freemason movement was established there in Thessaloniki and it was financed it was financed by various factions in the West by some of the bankers that I always expose and at the same year they established the Ottoman Bank which was the first central bank of the Ottoman Empire and right after the central bank was established they plunged the nation into many 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 wars and much much debt <coughs> was created and the basically the Ottoman Empire imploded and crashed between about 1840 to 1900 it was totally bankrupt by the time World War I came about and it was actually referred to as the sick man of Europe and it was by design because because the Western European bankers and the different nations they wanted to take all the oil and just everything and of course you know the plunged in, in, into wars and so there were this the first Masonic Lodge that was opened in Thessaloniki they were financed to start this party called the Party for Union and Progress okay the party for union and progress and it was a it was basically they became a shadow government and they took over the they took over the government even though we still had the sultan they took over the government there was a parliament but it was run by them and they absolutely ran the nation into the ground because they were paid to destroy the nation and millions and millions and millions of people died on all sides you know the war of, of gallipoli and the the Armenian massacre and the massacre of Christians burning down over 3,000 churches. These were all conducted by a couple of rogue generals that were on the payroll of the bankers. Enver Pasha and Talat Pasha. These were not people that loved Turkey. These were people that hated Turkey. Just like you go to now Europe, you have all these people that they literally hate their own countries. They're part of this whole global New World Order. They come and they work for basically the globalists and they are, they are there to destroy the nation. They destroyed the sovereignty of the nation so much of the nations have been taken over by these forces 
in the top level and they're, act, they're demonic people. They are serving the spirit of Antichrist and they come to destroy nations. I, you know, I talked about what's happening in Nigeria recently. You know, the whole thing is about the oil. That's why they block the money from coming out because they want to bankrupt the nation, take the oil, just like what they did in Venezuela. So you need to pray for your nation. We need to stand up to the money changers that want to destroy the nations and they're part of the globalist system because we know that the whole world is now heading towards that one world government, one world religion, and one world money, money system. And that's what this whole thing is about. And that's what the rise of the Antichrist is about. But we, as the church of the Lord Jesus Christ, we are here. Amen. And we are the restraining force. And you must believe we're not going to give up. A lot of people have given up and saying, you know, it's just too far gone. We can't do anything about it. No, we can absolutely do something about it. We must preach the gospel. We must focus on our mission to preach the gospel. And we must focus on our mission to set the captives free. And we must focus on our mission of bringing the truth to people. So I didn't know much of this, of course, growing up and everything, you know. But through revelation of the Holy Spirit, you know, God changed my entire world view because, you know, what, much of what we are taught in school, in history, is all doctored up anyways. And all the mainstream media is totally compromised. You must understand that. So because the same money changers, they control the media. So it's nothing more than indoctrination. And a lot of people in the West, they think that there is freedom of press. It's rubbish. Maybe under the Soviets, there was Pravda and one government controlled newspaper and whatever. But now you think that, you know, there are 10 or 15 or 20, you know, newspapers and TV channels, but they're really all the same. When you look at it, there's like three guys that control the entire media in the world, really. <laughs> all these mega corporations that control media, you know. So it really still comes down to a group of elite people at the top that control the information and control the money. Amen. That's why we can never be attached to the world system. We must operate outside of the world system. Amen. We, are, we must operate according to principles of the kingdom of God. Amen. We must operate. So all that was exposed. And how did that happen? A lot of you have heard it, but some of you have not heard it. So I need to share this continually. Something happened to me in early 2011. 2010... The Lord gave me a word for 2011, and I spoke it to the word. I said, 2011 is going to be a year of revelation. And of course, when you say that, when you give everybody the word, that you're a part of that. Amen. You need to be partaker of that revelation yourself. So it's going to be a great year of revelation. Things are not as they seem. And then in 2011, I went on a time of fasting and praying, and I was just really crying out to the Lord to speak to me. I said, I'm going to shut off everything. I'm going to shut off media. I'm going to shut off everything. And I've got to hear from you, Lord. I don't care. I mean, I don't, I don't want to hear anything from the world system. I have got to hear from you. What is going on? And it's one of the nights I went to bed. In the middle of the night, I stood up in bed. Just like that. I stood up in bed. Woke up. The Holy Ghost woke me up. And I heard God spoke to me. I mean, I heard an audible voice of the Lord. I heard the audible voice of the Lord. And the Lord spoke to me. And the audible voice of the Lord said two words. Money changers. And I thought, um, Im my immediate reaction in my mind was, well, what has that got to do with anything? Money changers. I know the story. Jesus went into the temple, cleansed the temple, turned over the money changers' tables, and whipped them even. I mean, that's the only time. I mean, he actually got physically violent in the Bible. Money changers. What has that got to do with anything? But I knew that the Lord had spoken to me. Amen. And then I couldn't even sleep that night, so I went in. You know, it's in all four of the Gospels, and I read all of them, and as I was reading them, I saw something I had never seen before. I read them dozens and dozens of times, preached on them, related to the church, you know, but this had nothing to do with the church. The money changers and the system of money didn't have anything to do with the church. Yes, it gets into the church and whatever, but it's something else entirely. Do you understand me? Amen? And so, and the Lord said, I want you to study what money is, how money is created i want you to study the entire banking system the modern day banking system because we say money changers that doesn't mean anything to us today we don't use that today it's not a modern terminology we call what what is referred to in the bible as money changers today we refer to as bankers bankers and of course the lord said you know the love of money is the root of all evil so you trace the money you find you want to find the root of root cause of it you trace the money you trace the money you'll find what's going on 
and I spent hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of hours that that year studying and I have still continued to study and learn and and my entire worldview was changed I tell you my entire worldview was changed I discovered what's going on and those two words money changers answered all of my questions you know uh, 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 regarding the whole geopolitical scene what's going on in the world so I know what's going on in the world I know the world system I know what the mark of the beast is going to be it's about money it's about buy controlling buying and selling and now they're trying to you know I just they, ECB European Central Bank which is by the way has nothing to do with anything government it is a private bank it is a private corporation amen and what is the number one purpose of a business to make profit so it, it's a it's a it's a corporation that makes profit well I, I say corporation because there are shareholders but it's not like publicly traded corporation it really is a private privately owned business owned by a, a number of handful of bankers that also own and control the Federal Reserve of the United States which is also a private bank and all the other private central banks you understand me ECB just announced that they're doing away with the 500 euro note why because they don't want people to have cash they want to go cashless it's about becoming a cashless society Sweden's already going cashless you know and Denmark said they want to become cashless they're limiting the flow of money they're limiting they don't want people to have cash you understand me because if everything is in the bank they can just freeze it up just like that and you say okay sorry the banks are bankrupt what do you have what happens what happens to my money it's gone and it's only insured to a certain point even if it's insured to a certain uh, number it doesn't matter who insures it the taxpayer insures it anyway so it's still they're still gonna take it out of you so the whole thing is a big scam the big pyramid scam the big pyramid you find on the one dollar bill you know and they just announced uh, that they're gonna take Andrew Jackson off of the twenty dollar bill and you know that whole thing is really you know what it is because Andrew Jackson is the one that shut that shut down the central bank the second central bank in the United States they tried to assassinate him many many times they tried to kill him and he I was reading his speech and his whole campaign platform was Jackson and no bank and there's a speech it's in his memoirs he uses the words he uses the, the Bible scriptures concerning the money changers he said by the eternal God I will root out my nation from these thieves these money changers and so because he knew that the money changers were the most dangerous people they're more dangerous than armies with weapons so he and if you go to Tennessee in his tombstone it says he killed the bank his huge tombstone <laughs> President Andrew Jackson says he killed the bank that's what he wanted written on his tombstone and the guy was the guy was he was a he I mean the guy was now of course they're saying that he was a slave owner and he's this wicked guy they're trying to make him out to be some racist because that's the new thing now you're a racist anytime you speak out against any any truth of the Bible you're a racist you're a bigot you know that's how the whole the card is played you know you're a racist you're a bigot whatever you're intolerant you're, you're always you know you're intolerant so Christians are gonna become Christians are gonna be considered very intolerant racists and bigots and a danger to the one world government that's why the Antichrist wants to kill them all and if you read in the you know I believe you know we're going in the rapture but then you re we read because I'm teaching eschatology in the Bible school and I was talking about this yesterday I was talking about this yesterday I mean in the tribulation there'll be tribulation saints you know when the when the fifth seal is open you have the souls under uh, under the the altar which are all the 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 saints that are murdered by the antichrist in the tribulation because i mean to be a believer in the tribulation is going to cost you your life i mean but today of course you know i mean my god if there if it's a little chilly and windy people don't come to church pastor i'm just man i'm suffering for christ no you ain't suffering nothing yet you ain't seen nothing what are you talking about you suffering for christ you don't even know what suffering for christ is we have it easy here and the Chin Chinese government just announced they're going to stop the persecution of the Christian church. That's how they finally figured out. That's how they're going to stop the, sto the, gr the spread of Christianity in China by stopping the persecution. Because they just wanted to become comfortable. And, you know, and they want to allow the Westerners to come in and, and bring in all their denominations and turn brother against brother. And then everybody wants their, 
they're going to have big theological heads and no power. That's how you stop the power. You stop the persecution, let them have it easy. Because the Chinese church is powerful and it's growing. And it's a, actually, it's about to become, China is about to become the, the, uh, the nation with the most number of Christians on the planet. I mean, it's hard to know the numbers, but they say it's over 200 million Christians now in China. It's crazy. There's a whole wave of Chinese missionaries are going to come out of that movement. <laughs> the face of the church is changing, I'm telling you. The face of the church is changing. The face of the church is not white Westerners. It, it's a whole, every tribe, every tongue, every nation. God's raising up people full of the fire of the Holy Ghost, I tell you right now. Hallelujah. My God. I better hold myself back because I'm going to get my preaching on and we've got a few, few things to do here. Oh my God, the time is getting away from me. But you know, we take our time here. There's no time limit here. At the set river, we go three, three and a half if we need to. Amen. This is not American. This is not an American church. One hour dry cleaning service. In by 10, out by 11. Sing two hymns and one her take up the offertory, preach from the newspaper and the Wikipedia, and then pronounce the last rites and everybody goes home just as dead as they came. That's a problem. Yeah, that's what they said. I, I was in this one conference in America. They said, if you want to grow your church, you got to keep your service to one hour, 15 minutes max, all this other stuff. It's like, what? You just get a bunch of numbers, but then all those people are going to go to hell. They're not even saved. They don't even do altar calls anymore. It's offensive. They don't, there's one preacher that came out and wrote a book. He said he does not use the word sin in his sermons because it's offensive to people. Unbelievable stuff. The lukewarm church. Yes, the great falling away. The end time apostasy has begun. Oh, yes. Ordaining homosexuals as pastors and priests, marrying them. I mean, it's just craziness, man. A man proposed marriage to another man in front of the church. And the whole church got up applauding. And the pastor said it would be his great honor to marry them. I mean, this is, this is the insanity we're dealing with. This is the insanity we're dealing with. Tolerance. Love. Yeah. No, no. Don't twist God's love out of context. That's not love. That's not love. Love, that's, love loves good and hates evil. The God kind of love hates sin. Does not tolerate sin. Tolerating sin, loving sin is not love. It's wickedness to the core. It's total wickedness. Total deception. Total, absolute, total, demonic deception from the pit of hell. Please. Unbelievable stuff. So we have to stand up for what is true. We have to stand up for righteousness. And if, it's, if it costs our lives, so be it. So be it. Amen. They want to kill you? Great. Go ahead. Make my eternity. Amen. Adios amigos. I'm out of here. To be absent from the bodies, to be present with the Lord, I'm gone. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. My goodness. We're not going to put up with that. Amen. Compromise. Compromise, 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 compromise. And this insanity of people trying to unite with the catholic church the pope called on everybody to pray for all religions to come together and become brothers no absolutely not no way over my dead body i'm not uniting with anybody i used to be a muslim i i turned away from that i'm not having anything to do with it ever again so that he, he you know that's a part of the whole mystery babylon the harlot the harlot church mystery babylon and many, 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 even many evangelical, even some Pentecostal preachers are falling for this nonsense right now. The leading word of faith preacher, pastor in, in Sweden just became a Catholic, you know, and left the church and everything. I mean, he, unbelievable stuff. Now he denies even speaking in other tongues. Unbelievable that he was deceived then. Wow. <laughs> oh, my God. I mean, that's how bad this thing is going. You got to watch yourself and don't listen to anything and anybody. It's rubbish. It's too many people. 
especially because of the internet, social media, it's very easy to spread this stuff. And people fall for it very easily. And a lot of Christians are gullible and they're not. Listen, that's the, the biggest problem is many Christians are not. They're not, they don't have revelation of the word. They, they don't know the word. That's the biggest problem. People don't know the word and preachers don't preach the word. They preach down some watered down, feel good gospel that doesn't challenge anybody, that doesn't cause anybody to repent, that doesn't put, you know, they, listen, two thirds of preaching is reproving and rebuking. Reprove, rebuke, exhort. Everybody wants exhortation. What about, what about reprove and rebuke? Reproving and rebuke can come before, comes before exhortation. If you don't reprove and rebuke, you can't exhort anybody because you're just exhorting their sin then. You're just encouraging their, their flesh, their, their wicked lifestyle, their, the compromise. We're not, we're not encouraging compromise. Amen? We're not going to encourage compromise. We're going to encourage holiness without which no man can see God. No man can see God without holiness. No man can see God. And so you don't hear preaching on holiness anymore. You don't, you don't hear preaching on the fear of God anymore. One preacher said, don't, we shouldn't talk about the blood of Jesus. It grosses people out. What? What? We're going to talk about the blood of Jesus. We're going to talk about the blood, the blood, the blood. Because every time we say the blood, the devil just goes uh, to meltdown mode. Meltdown mode. It reminds him. It reminds him. His total defeat. How Jesus triumphed over him, made a spectacle of him, exposed him for the loser that he is. And so he doesn't want us to talk about the blood. He doesn't want us to talk about the name of Jesus. The name of Jesus is offensive. Amen. They said to Brother John Osteen, they invited him to come and do an opening prayer. This was years ago in Houston, Texas. And he's gone home to be with the Lord now, John Osteen. Uh, he was leading, you know church leader there in Houston, Texas, they invited him to this government luncheon or something. There was going to be all kinds of people there. And they said, please, can you do the opening prayer? But don't use the name of Jesus. Just say God. Because if you say, thank you, God, everybody's like, hey, man, because everybody has their own God. <laughs> he said, okay. So he gets up. In the name of Jesus, thank you, Jesus, for the forks. Thank you, Jesus, for the knives. Thank you, Jesus, for the glasses. Thank you, Jesus, for the bread. Thank you, Jesus, for the salt. I mean, he thanked Jesus for everything. And he says, Jesus and he said in Jesus name and if you don't like it it's your problem and he walked out we gotta be, we gotta be bold we're not gonna compromise and water down the word amen hallelujah just thank Jesus for everything thank you Jesus for the breath thank you Jesus you know hallelujah because <laughs> and I'm sure there's people foaming at the mouth there that's fine Amen. Hallelujah. I said something yesterday morning at the breakfast. Um, you know, I started the story and kind of went on a tangent. But what happened here was during the revival that broke out in the 1800s, there was a prophecy that came through a young, listen, a 15-year-old boy. Was a, he, he was having visions and prophesying. And many people despised the prophecies and they didn't listen but there was a group of armenian believers spirits filled that hearkened onto the prophecy and the boy prophet had said that there was great calamity coming upon the christians and so some of them prepared and they left and also a prophecy came that they should go to los angeles california a group of armenians went to los angeles california and joined another group of people praying because the Lord had showed them that there would be a global revival of the Holy Ghost outpouring. And they begin to pray. And, in, and they were praying. And in 1907 in Los Angeles, California, Azusa Street Revival broke out in a small house. Which went all over the world. Which we today know as the great Pentecostal revival. A renewal of Pentecost. And now we have over 800 million people who speak in tongues all over the world. So, I mean, all these people that say tongues is of the devil or tongues is in the past, they, they don't even know what they're talking about. They're deceived. They're just all r religious rubbish. There's 800 million people now speaking. And, and Pentecost is, it's the fire of Pentecost is spreading in South and Central America so, so strongly. 
that the Catholic churches are emptying out. That's why they had to, they chose a, 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 a you know, a, a South American Pope to go try to bring the people back. So here's the thing. What happened with the Armenians? They went, so the man who founded, you ready for this? The man who founded the Full Gospel Businessman's Fellowship International, a man named Demos Shakarian, his grandfather was one of those Armenians that left Turkey be because of the prophecy. And it was born in this nation, in the geographical location we have now under the Ottoman Empire. He was born here. And so we are now seeing the establishment of this full gospel businessman's fellowship. And it's by no accident, and I wasn't even, I'm, I was not involved at all. I'm just, you know, I'm just a pastor. I mean, this is about the businessman rising up. It's not about the pastors and the leaders. Do You need to understand that the business people are leaders in the marketplace. Because what is leadership? In the, in the simplest definition, leadership is influence. So we are influencers. You are an influencer. You, are, you need to be a salt and a light influencer in the marketplace. The Christian businessmen and women that God raises up and anoints, God does not call you to make money. Jesus never said, go into all the nations and make money. He said, go into all the nations and make disciples. So everything we do in business must be about making disciples, must be about advancing the kingdom of God. Everything you do as a Christian businessman or a Christian businesswoman must contribute to the vision of the kingdom of God, seeking first His kingdom and His righteousness, and all these things shall be added onto you. Not chasing after money, not chasing after success, but chasing after God. Having a passion for the things of God. Chasing after souls. Advancing the kingdom. So I tell our business people all the time, you must attach an eternal purpose to your business. You must attach an eternal purpose. Everything, because everything you do must be focused on eternity. You must be eternity minded. Because one day you will stand before the Lord and all your works will go through the fire. And all your works will be tested by fire. And you might have made millions and millions and billions. But if it all turns to ashes when it goes to the fire, you've done nothing for the kingdom. And you will have no rewards. And so all of our rewards, the, the desire of the nations shall come in. Haggai chapter 2, our bro brother shared the prophecy. The desire, another, another translation says, the precious things of the nations shall come in. Well, what are precious to the nations? The number one precious thing to an every nation are souls. Our souls are the people when you lose your people you have nothing belgium as we know it will no longer a white belgian will no longer exist in 2030 because the birth rate is so low now it's just you know belgian is going to be taken over by all the immigrants by 2030 there'll be no like white belgians left so no more belgian chocolate <laughs> might be it'll be belgian Belgium, whatever, Belgian, uh, Dunar, Belgian, Köfte, Belgian, <laughs> Belgian, you know, whatever, Be <laughs> Belgian, Belgian shawarma, <laughs> Belgian banco, you know, whatever the immigrants cook <laughs> will be the food, the national food of Belgium. <laughs> the precious things of the nations are the people. We must reach the people. And we cannot reach the people without the finances. The gospel has two legs. The gospel has two legs. On one side is the power, the anointing. You cannot carry the gospel to the nations without the power of God, without the anointing of the Holy Spirit. But the second leg of the gospel that it must stand on are the resources, the finances. That's what carries the gospel. It takes money to carry the gospel. It takes money to preach the gospel. It takes money to reach people. It takes money to establish organizations. It takes money to go on television. It takes money to acquire buildings and facilities. It takes money. It takes money to train people. Amen? And the more finances you have, the more you can do. And I can tell you right now, I mean, we have a big vision in this house. Our vision is not a $5 vision. I can tell you that right now. Our vision is a minimum 10 million dollar vision the lord actually gave me a plan that we can reach this nation in two years with 10 million dollars so i i need the 10 million dollars i need some people to rise up and get with the plan and the program amen and to do it we can't leave it up because a lot of times people think as well the pastor should preach and he should believe god for all the money and the finances no no, no it's everyone's job is to believe god for the money and the finances 
A amen. amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. So I didn't have a say in this. It just happened, but I don't believe that it is by it's any accident that the president who was elected to be the chapter president, the first chapter president of the chapter in Turkey, is an Armenian brother. Because it was in 1855 that the prophecy came to the Armenians. And they moved to Los Angeles and became a part of the, the prophetic and the Pentecostal movement. And then the grandson of the man who received the prophecy here in Turkey started the Full Gospel Businessmen's Fellowship International. He, he's gone home to be with the Lord in 1993. He lived to be about 80, I think. He was born 1913 to 1993. So he was 80. Year, and, and I'd share something about this. And I got several messages from some pastors that I know in America. And they said, I knew Demos Shakarian, great men of God. And so... You know, and it was Oral Roberts that prophesied to him as well about what, how God would use the businessmen full of the... Because you see, we're always looking to the ministers, the fivefold ministry. Only about 3% of the church is going to actually stand in the fivefold ministry or in the pulpit. What are, the rest, the world is your pulpit. You don't need the pulpit. You don't need to... You don't need my pulpit. You have your pulpit. Monday through Saturday, you have your pulpit. This is the pulpit on Sunday where you get empowered with the word, where you get the impartation of the anointing, where you get the fire of God, where you get encouraged with the word, where you get challenged with the word, and then you go out and then your pulpit is the rest. You have a huge pulpit for a whole lot longer than I have. I got you for a couple of hours. You got hours and hours out there. You, this is, the world is your pulpit, the marketplace, the highways and the byways compel the lost to come in. That is your pulpit. That is your calling to do the work of the ministry. The saints that do the work of the ministry. What is the work of the ministry? Well, there's work of the ministry in the house. Yeah, that's fine. For a few hours, we have ushers, we have greeters, all of that other stuff. But then the work of the ministry is, number one, you have been given the ministry of reconciliation. Every believer has been given the ministry of reconciliation. Amen. That means you reconcile man unto God. How do you do that? Win the lost. Preach the gospel. Amen. Hallelujah. So then it's our job. Our job becomes as believers to empower the gospel by our giving, by sowing. And so as a businessman, a businesswoman, you must make God the number one partner of your business. Amen. You must make God. And, and also, please, do not get into partnership with unbelievers. It never turns out good. That's what the Bible warns you about being unequally yoked with unbelievers you know we had a brother here uh, some years ago and he comes up to me he said he's going to go into a partnership with a some cousin or I, I can't remember some distant uh, family member and the man was involved in a you know Islamic cult you know like a, what they call tariqah a sect I said don't do it don't do it he said well no God spoke to me I'm going to prosper because you've been telling preaching prosperity I said hey whoa 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 there are a lot of different factors involved here. You know, people take the message and when their hearts aren't right, they run, off, run with it in the wrong direction. I said, don't do it. But he didn't listen to me. He went in and lost everything and the man actually put it. He was just foolish. You know, he trusted him. Everything was in his name and the guy took off and then all the debt was left with him and everything. And then basically what happened was he had a nervous breakdown and he died from a heart attack. He died from a heart attack. I had to go bury the guy. And he was not even 50 yet. So, I mean, it can cost you. you you've got you to get wisdom from the Lord. Amen. You've you got to do things according to the word. No, no cutting corners. No shortcuts. Let God set the level of your prosperity. Let God lead you. Amen. Let God lead you step by step. The steps of a righteous man are ordered of the Lord. So let him lead you. Let him guide you. And then you've got to make sure that you submit to spiritual authority that can speak into your life and then you have people around you not just your buddies but you have quality spiritual people around you and that's why it's also important for us to establish these fellowships so that Christian business people come and, and be a, become a part of a, the kind of fellowship that can minister to their needs and also keep them accountable accountability is very very important business a lot of business people you know they, they're not accountable to local church they think they're kings they have all the money and they, can, they think they can dictate to pastors. I had a man here who basically tried to buy his way into a leadership here. 
pledging all this money publicly and then behind the scenes he's saying well i'll give that money if pastor does this for me puts me in charge of this put me no no i said you and your money perish we're not for sale you don't have enough money to shut my mouth and you don't have enough money to buy me i've already been purchased with a price you can't even pay that price i belong to christ i've been called of god you don't have enough money you don't have enough money to buy one drop of the anointing amen hallelujah i don't need your money but you need my anointing with your money you can't get my anointing but with my anointing i can get your money <laughs> hallelujah thank you jesus so you got to put things in perspective but unfortunately that's another big problem a lot of a lot of churches are dictated to buy brother big bucks brother big bucks comes in and he runs everything behind the scenes and people give money with strings attached the only the only string attached to money is to hell i'll tell you right now the only string attached to money is the one that's going to hang you like it hung judas iscariot you don't you don't want to do anything with strings attached you don't want to use money to manipulate anything money must be given freely Money must be given willingly. Money must be given cheerfully. All your tithes and offerings come willingly and cheerfully onto the Lord. It is your worship. You do it. You give it onto Jesus. You're not giving onto man. You give onto Jesus. You worship Jesus with your giving. You believe God. Amen. You worship Jesus. You do it as a ministry. You do it as your service onto the Lord. Amen. And you do it to be a blessing. You are blessed to be a blessing. So the number one purpose of prosperity is to be a blessing. Is to be a blessing and so do not let money become a distraction and then why is it that God cannot release unlimited resources and money to the church because most Christians cannot handle it it'll blow them right out of the water they can't handle it I mean there's some people that can't even handle a thousand bucks you give them a thousand bucks it'll be gone that's how bad it is and people are you know believing God for millions and they can't even handle a hundred bucks so listen it's about stewardship the number one test of prosperity is stewardship we are stewards we don't own anything we are not owners we do not own anything we don't even own our lives we don't even belong to ourselves we've been purchased for the price amen, amen. hallelujah we're just stewards everything that is placed in our hands we are stewards of and we're going to have to give an account before God what we have done with the time, the resources, the money, the relationships, the gifts, the talents and the callings and everything that's been placed in our lives and in our hands. One day we'll stand before the Lord and what we have done with what has been given to us, the talents that we have received from the Lord is going to pass through the fire and then you're going to find out what you really have at the end. And so you want to make sure that you don't wait for that fire. You want to make sure that you get the fire now. Let the whole fire of the Holy Spirit purify everything now. Let everything pass through the fire of the Holy Spirit now. Amen. Put everything into the fire of the Holy Spirit. Amen. I just pray, Lord, send your fire and burn out everything that is not of you. I mean, you know, I, I, I pray that occasionally. Lord, send the fire to the church. Send the fire to the ministry and burn out things that are not of you. And then boom, the stuff starts shaking. And I start seeing, oh, okay, this one is, doesn't need to be here. We don't need to be doing that. Because things happen. And sometimes people start out right, but then they go off. Amen. It's not how you start, it's how you finish. Listen to me. It's not how you start, it's how you finish. You don't want to be a shooting star, just appear in the sky as a bright light and then disappear. Flash in the pan. You want to make sure that you, you last. You last. You last. That you leave, you, have, you leave a lasting legacy. Because people are always remembered by how they finished, not how they started amen so you want to make sure that you run your race you finish your race amen you are a good steward amen hallelujah and don't compare yourself with other people because some start with two talents others start with five and if you look at the talents that they have then you just get frustrated oh god let I me mean, look at this i've been doing this for years and look i mean they just did two years and look how they're breaking through and what about me no 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 listen some people are sent to be an oasis in the desert others are sent by the cedars of lebanon <clears throat> so everybody's different okay don't don't compare where you are and what you're doing with other people don't compare yourself with other nations don't compare yourself with other ministries don't compare yourself with other business people 
Hello? Don't compare yourself with other business people. I mean, there's some countries where it might be easier to do certain kinds of business, and here, challenging. I mean, you really have to believe God to do your business without paying bribes. You really have to believe on the favor of the Lord. Other places, it's pretty good. I mean, structure is really good. You don't really have to worry about stuff like that. Things function a lot better and smoothly, and in some countries, they don't. Amen. Hallelujah. In some countries, anything goes. So you got to make sure that, you know, you stay with the Word, and you believe God, and you do what's right, and let the Lord bless you and promote you. Don't take matters into your own hands. Don't try to get in, force things in the flesh. Amen. Don't strive in the flesh. Let the Lord do it. Let the Lord open the door. Let the Lord do it. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Stewardship. Stewardship is a key. Stewardship is a key. And so we are stewards of everything that, we have been pla- that has been placed in our hands. Amen. Our tithes belong to the local church. A businessman just recently asked me. He got a project and his tithe. He said, can I give my tithe to my needy uncle and cousins. I said, no, 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 your tithe, your tithe comes to the local church, brother. Your tithe comes to the local church. Amen. Well, I'm going to help people. No, 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 you help. Number one thing you do is you help the ministry. You help the ministry. Your tithes goes to the ministry of the Lord. And you want to bless people? You can still bless people. Amen. But tithe comes to the local church. And then you sow offerings. You sow seed. You give offerings. Amen. Above and beyond your tithes. And to be honest with you, your tithe is not your seed. Tithing, listen, tithing releases the blessing. Now that you have the blessing, now you can sow into the blessing. And what does the blessing do? Be fruitful, multiply, replenish. So now that you have the blessing, hello, then your seed can multiply. So tithing simply activates the blessing. Just you're under an open heaven of blessing, continual blessing. Amen. You can walk in the blessing. Amen. And then, then now you can, on top of your tithes, you can sow seeds. And obviously, what does it say? He who sows little, reaps little. He who sows much, reaps much. So, amen. So you determine the level of your harvest by determining the level of your seed. Amen. A big need is going to re- require a big seed. Amen. You can't be believing God for millions and sow ten bucks. You're gonna, you, you know, it's going to have to be something radical. You know. You're going to have to be a radical giver, a radical sower. Because it's the radical things that brings the breakthrough. And so you can't just become also comfortable in your giving. You have to stretch yourself in your giving. You have to be even challenged in your giving. Amen? Hallelujah. So radical breakthroughs is going to take radical measures, radical decisions. And to go somewhere you've never been before, you're going to have to do something you've never done before. You're going to have to sow a seed you've never sown before. So, hallelujah. This is helping anybody here today. So let's pray. You have an opportunity to bring your tithes, and then you have an opportunity to sow seed into the kingdom. You're sowing into the good ground. You're sowing into the nations. You're sowing into the gospel. Amen. Father, we thank you today. And as we come... We bring our tithes, we bring our offerings, we give to worship, we give to empower the gospel, we give because we love you, we give because we want to be a blessing. And I thank you, Lord. Our focus is on you. But it's undeniable that you will bless us. It's undeniable that you will multiply our seeds sown. It's undeniable that you'll increase us. It's undeniable that you'll meet every need above and beyond. It's undeniable that you'll provide an abundance in our lives. It's undeniable that we'll be overflowing. Hallelujah. Our, our storage places will be filled with plenty and our vats shall be overflowing with new wine. It's undeniable. It's undeniable because you're El Shaddai, you God of many blessings. You're El Shaddai, the God who's more than enough. You're Jehovah Jireh, the Lord our provider. We trust you, Lord. We trust you, Lord. We don't look upon to man. We don't trust in the arm of the flesh, but we trust in the Lord. We trust in the Lord. We trust in the Lord. Hallelujah. We thank you, Lord. You are our provider. Thank you, Jesus. We trust you for wisdom. We trust you for financial provision we trust you for breakthroughs we trust you lord for favor favor we trust you for ideas we trust you for divine guidance we trust we trust you for supernatural even by the gifts of the holy spirit we trust you for words of knowledge words of wisdom the gift of faith hallelujah to operate at a super in a supernatural level at a supernatural realm hallelujah 
not naturally we're not going to conduct business naturally we're going to conduct business supernaturally thank you jesus because we are christian businessmen and businesswomen we are believers hallelujah thank you jesus amen say this after me i am a supernatural being the life that i live is a supernatural life hallelujah thank you jesus thank you jesus thank you jesus amen 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 